Good morning and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel for those of you who are new and I have a house full of awake daughters so it's gonna probably be loud but I was super excited because on Wednesday I received my oldest daughter's curriculum for the year um, for first grade. We've been finishing up some of her kindergarten stuff and we're practically done so oh, thank you. Thank you. Can you help her get dressed? Thank you so much. So, Michael, I'll let Hannah help you get dressed. I already changed her diaper. So, on Wednesday, I got her new curriculum for the school year, and so I am getting ready to put it all together. Oh, all right. So, sorry, lots of lots of distractions and interruptions, but I'm just really excited. So, I wanted to show you what we are using for curriculum this year. And um, that way, if any of you are looking into homeschooling or are trying to find curriculum for your kids, um, this is a pretty good idea of what you could get. We went through um, Bookshark, and this is our second time going through Bookshark. And last year, I just ordered the History and Science. This year, I ordered the entire year curriculum. It is pricey, but um, to me, right now that she's little, it kind of helps me figure out what she's what she is gonna like and um, what works best for us. So right now I really do enjoy their history and science program. This year we are doing history, science, and language arts. And then everything else that I have is through the entire, through, through Bookshark. Um, I got, I ordered everything off of Bookshark. It was the entire curriculum for the year. I'll, um, I'll go ahead and show you what we're working with. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So right now, I am organizing their binder. It comes with this like giant binder, Bookshark Homeschool Curriculum. And everything is really awesome, I love it. It's Everything is broken up into days and weeks. Sorry for the whole stopping randomly and abruptly, but um, we had a few things that we had to get taken care of today. We had just kinda had a family day outside of the house. It is Saturday, so. We are back home and I am going through and getting my planner ready for the week and the week ahead. And I am wanting, I just figured I'd finish showing you guys what I'm doing. So last thing, uh, last thing I showed you was uh, my binder for Bookshark. I'm getting that prepared and all of that is ready now. So I'll show you real quick what I have. So far, the binder is now completely put together. So, again, this is Bookshark. And I love that it is already like tailored every day. So, I'll show you, for example, section two is our schedule and notes. And it gives you a schedule. Sorry, you can see the shadow of the camera. It gives you a schedule. So, day one, two, three, four. Every week, there's one day left blank. And that's perfect for us because one day a week we go to, uh, we have our co-op on Thursdays. So we have school, we do school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. And then Thursday we'll sometimes do a couple of things if it's like in between um, or if we have time. Um, but it's not like if we don't get to it, it's not a huge deal. And then Fridays are usually like our fun days. So we kind of finish up some things and then Friday we'll do like a activity or something like that. But so every day it gives you um, what you're doing. So for example, this week we're gonna be doing the Usborn World of, or sorry, Usborn Book of Peoples of the World. And then it tells you what pages you're gonna go through. And then during this, if you see like this little thing here, that's like a parent note. It lets you know that there's a special note. And at the bottom it tells you, it's like a code, it tells you what those are. And it'll tell you a special note to mom and dad in the notes. So over here in the notes, this is kind of like the teacher's guide to what you're doing. It just explains what that note to mom and dad is. So. It's pretty cool that way you can look at it before you start your lesson and make sure that there's not anything you need before you um, start working on your lesson. Um, for the it has read alouds that you do every day, which I think are great, and it goes through a lot of like classics. Like we're going to start with Charlotte's Web, and we're going to be reading um, 
favorite poems of childhood, Mother Goose Rhymes. And then it goes through level one readers because she is now considered, or she is now doing a first grade curriculum. It's gonna be talking about the level one readers. So I can read it, word lists. So there's a lesson that we go through and then I can read it and then there's practice for her to do on her own. So every day there's a little bit of practice. We do a lesson a one day and then every day she practices from what we did in the lesson. And that's great because it has, for example, Charlotte's Web. We're gonna be reading chapters one and two. And then we're going to go through some vocabulary. I can ask questions just for um, to build up reading comprehension. It's great. Um, same thing with the po favorite poems from childhood. I can read it. It gives you some tips as a parent on what you can do prior to and during each lesson. Uh, and it's the same thing with the science and the language arts. So in our history, we're, going, we're doing intro to world history, year one of two. This is my guide. And then we are also doing, sorry, I already have everything set up in the binder. For science, we're doing animals, astronomy, and physics. And then we are also be doing language arts. And that all came with the curriculum from Bookshark. So for science, again, it breaks it down day by day. So us born world of animals, activity sheet. So after you read your book, there's an activity sheet or question that you work on. This is an activity sheet. So we'll be doing question number one after our lesson on Monday, questions two and three, four and five, and then six will happen on Friday for us because we don't have school Thursdays. And then it gives optional do together, which is great. So this one is kids choice, the world around you. And then it also provides supplies for the activity that we will be doing on Friday. It has the children's activity sheet. And it also, the thing I love about it, it also has an activity sheet, um, uh, the answer guide. And then same thing with language arts. Language arts is the exact same thing. We have every day what we will be doing. And then notes just in case. All the stuff that we will be going through. We're going to be doing handwriting without tears. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this with Hannah because she's really good at handwriting. I may use this as practice for Adrian because she struggles a little bit more with her handwriting. And another I can read it book and again all these different things so at the end it has our activity sheets so language one activity sheet um, and then she has to read it and I believe copy the sentence so right now she's reading it and then she's going to copy the sentence and then again activity sheets are words for the week so it's really cool the way it breaks it down and I really like it so let me continue and show you what else we are working with this week too to start off this stuff goes with our history curriculum. So hands-on history, which I love this program through Bookshark, it's awesome. Lots and lots and lots of great activities. So each, um, not each week, but there are specific amount of activities in every so many weeks in the curriculum, we will stop and do some kind of hands-on activity that correlates to one of the lessons that we are doing. Right now we're doing World History 1 through Hands-On History, and it gives you a list. So introduction, supplies list, homes around the world, miniature yurt, um, ancient Greece, we're gonna make a laurel wreath for ancient China, we'll make a dragon puppet, ancient Rome, we're gonna make a chariot, a Greek vase for Greece, a clay cylinder seal, um, a Senate game board, Trojan horse, archaeology kit. So there's all kinds of great activities. And it shows you exactly how to do the activity, which I love. It breaks it down really easy so that you don't have to wonder, what am I doing with this? So it gives you the majority of everything you need. Sometimes you'll need a couple extra things, but not very much. So here it's, it gives you the supplies list. So materials that we provide, and these are all the materials that the, that the um, company provides for you, and then these are the materials that you will need. So scissors, a felt tip, permanent marker, scotch or masking tape. So really simple things that most people have. For science, we have a DVD, 
Inquisikids, Discover and Do Level 1, Science with Water, Science with Magnet, Science with Light and Mirrors. So after each lesson in science, we will put a DVD on, not after each lesson, sorry. So every Friday we put the DVD on and it's an activity that we can do as a family. This one requires a little bit more um, preparation, but again, it already, it, all, it also has this here. So this is with, I believe it's Avix. Avix, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it or not, but yeah. And it comes with all of these wonderful things. So magnets and wires and corks and so yeah, I'm really excited. Modeling clay. So it's gonna be a fun year. And these two kind of go together. So you watch the DVD and then you do the activity together. And Hannah always looks forward to Fridays. So now after we've talked about history and science, um, these are all of the books that we are going to be going through this year. I'm excited. Um, there's a few Dr. Seuss, Green Eggs and Ham, The Cat in the Hat, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, and one other, sorry. And Put Me in the Zoo. So these are some books that we're gonna be going through, some just like fun classics. These are ones that we're gonna be looking on with like the reading practice for Hannah, the I Can Read It books got the word list one two and three and then we've got detectives in togas Henry Huggins Louisa Lari Goonie Bird Green the years of Ma Miss Agnes Mr. Popper's Penguins understood Betsy Dorothy Canfield Fisher the best trick Favorite Poems of Childhood, Homer Price, Welcome to Silver Street Farm, Charlotte's Web, which is gonna be our first book that we're going through, Owls in the Family, Mountain Born, Little Pear, and then of course, these are some that kind of relate to science and history. So we've got the Why Do People Eat, Game On in Ancient Greece, Game On on the Run in Ancient China, Pasteur's Fight Against Microbes. Then we've got the science activities. These are fun. These are what we will be working on with, in correlation with the science. So those two go together with the DVD. A Big Ball of String, Time Traveler, The Magic School Bus, an absolute favorite. Archaeologists dig for cl uh, for clues. First Encyclopedia of the Human Body, space. Then we've got the Usborn World of Animals, Usborn Peoples of the World, Usborn Book of World History, the Great Wall of China, the Silk Route. You wouldn't want to be a Sumerian slave. A life of hard labor you'd rather avoid. It could always be worse. So, those are the books that come with it. Some people say that that's like one of their biggest issues with Bookshark is the amount of books you get. I think it's cool. I don't see the need to have to go, I, I don't force myself to go through each and every single one of the books. We take it day by day. Sometimes, depending on how long the chapters are, one to two chapters a day may not be feasible because sometimes your kids just don't want to sit there for an entire chapter. So we just take it day by day. The ones that I absolutely go through are for our, that, the ones that are pertaining to our lessons. So don't feel like you have to do it every single day, all day. So I'm really excited about our math this year. It is a new program for us. Last year we did um, MCP math, and this year we are going to be try trying out the math you see. So every day she will, um, or for each lesson, sorry, not every day, for each lesson, she will be watching a DVD video to start and that gives us both our like where we're starting some background knowledge on it and then 
she will be getting into single digit adding and subtracting. Um, but we start with learning our places. So it's pretty cool. This is the student workbook. So every day she'll be doing certain little lessons. And then at the end of the lesson, there will be a test. And that is her test book back there. This is again our DVD and this is mine. This is the instructor's manual. So I can get like extra um, like questions to ask, um, trying to build her comprehension of the math topics that are being taught. And in here we have our manipulatives, which I think are amazing. So these are the math you see, sorry. These are the math you see manipulatives and we're learning about integers, integers a lot. So this is our integer block kit. And it has all of these. I'm like super, super, super stoked to get into this. I think she's gonna really like it. It's more hands-on than the math that we were doing. So I think she'll really enjoy that because she seems to be like me, more of a kinesthetic learner than just showing her in a book. So she needs to kind of touch it, feel it, put her hands on it and get the whole picture. Here came with our program also. It is Sight Word Bingo. So this is just a great way to build up sight, word um, sight words and learning how to um, uh, identify certain sight words that maybe don't follow the rules, like have, you know. Silent E at the end does not make that A say its name. So <laughs> certain things like that are great. So this is good practice for that, and it's a fun little game, and these are the cards that go with it. And this, again, is um, the handwriting without tears. So this is going to be something that we use in our language arts program, which, like I said, I'm not sure if I will do this with Hannah because she already writes really well. So I may actually use this with Adrian to build up her writing since we do like a preschool. So if you hear the whining dog in the background, it's because he's in timeout because he likes to go running to our window peeking out and if he sees anybody, like it doesn't matter who you are, animal, person, a bird landed on our front yard, he will go nuts and start whining and complaining and wanna go outside and bark the mess out of that animal. So he's in timeout because he wouldn't listen when I told him to stop. So if you hear him whining, it's because he's not out of timeout yet. I'm waiting for it to get a little bit darker outside where he cannot see. So go, let me go ahead and get started on the last thing that we will be doing this year, which I am super excited about. This here is our newest addition to our curriculum, and this is Hooked on Spelling and Hooked on Phonics. So something that I learned that Hannah started doing, sorry, I'm bouncing the baby. <laughs> something that I noticed that Hannah was doing was she will read the beginning of a word, like she'll see the beginning of the word, like uh, for example, clap, and she'll be like, okay, She'll, sometimes she'll skip the L, say the A, and then automatically think it's a difficult, like she'll come up with the most random word. So, and she does really well, like if I slow her down, then she'll get the word, but she just tries to speed through it. So I thought it would be great to get her the hooked on phonics so that she learns um, tools and um, how to read, how to slow down, how to look at a word, and then um, kind of go from there. So, cause it focuses more on sounding each letter out and I think it'll be good practice for her. So we're only gonna do it once a week and then we're also gonna do the hooked on spelling once a week, just to help her start learning how to um, spell things out. So it works on spelling patterns, word blends, um, irregular words and other things like that. And then I believe that one is for ages five through eight for the hooked on spelling. And then the hooked on phonics, I got her the level three emergent readers and that's for um, ages four through six which she is six so i'm really excited so yeah that's pretty much it for our curriculum and um, i'm gonna finish writing out my plan for the week and show you what we're doing for the week that way you get an idea because seeing all of this is overwhelming and having a plan in action makes it much more like oh I got it, we can do that. So if you are looking into homeschooling, if you're just starting out, like uh, we were last year, this is our second year, 
and it was a bit daunting last year because I had no clue what I was doing. I taught for a few years before I started, um, before I decided to stay home, but I taught high school, so this is a whole new <laughs> arena for me. I love it, it's exciting, every day is different, so let me finish my plan for next week, and I will show you what we're doing and how I break each day up, and um, that way you can kind of get an idea if you're interested or know somebody who is interested in homeschooling and may want some tips and pointers. So I will be back as soon as I'm done with that. Good morning. So today is Monday and I finally finished my planner. Um, Hannah is already started on her math work and um, I'll just give you an overview of how I planned our week. So last time we spoke, you saw my counter was littered with stuff. So it can look a little overwhelming and daunting, but it's really easy to break. Once you break it down day by day, it's like, okay, this is manageable. So let me go ahead and turn you guys around and I will show you what we've got. Shiloh is still sleeping. <laughs> so um, Hannah is starting. It is not 11 a.m. It's actually 9.30 in the morning. But we started a little bit early because I want her to go ahead and get started on her math while I do breakfast. Um, so I'm going to make breakfast for everybody while um, she does her math. And then um, we'll probably get really started around 10.30, closer to 11. So first, we, uh, we this is our first time using Math UC and she really likes it so far and so do I because it's using a lot of manipulatives hands-on. Um, so right now we started with the DVD. So we have this DVD and there's a man that teaches the less, each lesson, the concept of the lesson. And then we use the manipulatives and go through our first lesson. So we, we did lesson one, talking about place value. And we are going to be doing worksheet, um, or worksheets A and B. And tomorrow we'll, be, we'll review the lesson one, but we'll be doing worksheets C and D. Same thing on Wednesday, review, and then lesson E, and that is the last lesson of the week. We don't have math on co-op days, because Thursday is when we go to co-op. And that's why I wrote my note up there, co-op Thursday from 9 a.m. to 12.30. And then on Friday, we will have our test. So we'll review and then have a test. For next, we will do language arts. So I don't want to start language arts any later than 11.40. And we're going to introduce the spelling words which are in my planner. Um, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was in a rush writing this. It's supposed to be, I can read it, and then I'm gonna be introducing her word lists for lesson one, and then she is going to be reading Pat and Nat. Those are the first two stories she'll be reading, and we'll be doing the activity sheet, which is called copy work. Then the next day she'll plant, so practice spelling her words, and then she'll read page three of her book, and we'll do the work capitalization worksheet, Again, practice writing her spelling words. I can read it, pages four and five, and then worksheet number three, and then we're gonna be doing a matching sounds word game. Again, nothing on Thursday because we have co-op, and then she'll have her review and spelling test on Friday. She gets 10 spelling words a week. So this is our history for the week. We're gonna be doing Book of, the, Book of Peoples of the World. It's an Esborne book pages two and three, um, a poem book, and we'll be reading the story, The Land of Nod, Charlotte's Web, chapters one and two, again, People of the World, page five, Humpty Dumpty is the poem we're gonna be reading, and Charlotte's Web, chapter three. Here we go, and then um, again, People of the World, six and nine, and then there's always review questions in the, in the, um, the actual, setup that I have going on. Poems, page two. And then Charlotte's Web, chapter four. Then we're gonna review People of the World, all the things that we learned, and then read chapter five. And nothing on Thursday, because that is our co-op day. And then our last subject, so I don't wanna start any later than 12.45 for science. World of Animals, this is page six and seven. We're going to do activity sheet number one, world of animals eight and nine, and then activity sheet number two and three, 
So the activity sheet has six questions on it, and we go through one, question, one to two questions a day after we've done our lesson. So we learn about specific things, we answer a question regarding that. That way it's fresh in her mind. And then World of Animals 10 and 11, activity sheet number four and five. Um, I'll explain this in just a second. And then on Friday, we'll do Intro to Science with Magnets. We have our DVD that goes with our um, science uh, work, and we'll be doing tracks 35 through 38. And usually it has an activity that goes along with it in volume two, our science activities volume two, pages 26 and 27. And that's something that we will do on Friday. It's like our little fun activity. And then we'll answer number six of our, our, our activity worksheet. And then this here is on Thursdays. I wasn't sure if I'd have room, but I did. So on Thursdays, my plan is to be home by 2.30 because we have co-op from 9 to 12.30 in the afternoon. And um, usually afterwards, we meet up with a bunch of the homeschooling moms and go to the park. And the kids get to play for a couple hours. So my goal is to leave the park by like 2.15 so that I'm home by 2.30 and then we can do what I'm about to show you. So as I showed you when I had all my curriculum on the table, I got hooked on phonics and hooked on spelling. So we will be doing one lesson a week and that would be on Thursdays. So we'll be doing hooked on phonics lesson one and hooked on spelling lesson one. So we'll do one lesson a week and it'll be on Thursdays or when we get home. So around 2.33 o'clock. So that is how I broke up our week for this week. If you are interested in seeing anything more in depth, like how I go through each lesson, how we do the math, especially the math is pretty cool. Leave a comment below that I can go and actually show you guys. I can, I can show you guys how we do our math starting with the DVD, kind of like a breakdown of how we do different subjects if you're interested. So if you are, leave a comment below. And I hope you enjoyed this video of how I organize our homeschool curriculum. So if you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you are new, I'd love to have you stick around and subscribe. So go ahead and hit that red button and your bell. So make sure your notifications are turned on. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.